Hi, my name is Matthew Terranova, and today I'm going to try to go over as quickly as I can my backstory. Um, I keep alluding to that, but I haven't actually done it, so here we go. Um, my panic attacks, which I'm going to try to call them false alarms, like that's okay with everybody, um, started when I was 16. Um, for reference, I'm now 47, so when I say I've been on a path for a while and this journey has been going on for a while, has been. Um, I was on the way to a movie with my girlfriend at the time, and all of a sudden, I couldn't breathe. My heart started beating out of my chest. You know, very typical what you would hear, but something that I had never experienced before. Um, I had to pull over. My girlfriend drove me home. My mom, who was a nurse, very quickly recognized I was having a panic attack. So. Within a few weeks, I was seeing a psychiatrist and being prescribed Xanax. Um, I remember when I took the very first one, in fairness to the medication, it was like everything was clearer. Um, I could think more clearly, everything slowed down. It was, it was very cool, but as the days went on and I would take it, one, I wasn't having any more panic attacks anyway, um, and I just had this feeling like I, I, you know, I didn't need this, so I quit taking it. Fast forward a few months, um, and at the time, a lot was going on in my life. Um, besides being a junior in high school, um, there was just a lot going on. I had a friend of mine's, one of my best friend's brothers had recently died, so there's a lot of things that I needed to be dealing with at the time that I didn't, um, or wasn't dealing with in a very good way, let's put it that way. Um, but we're not going to get onto the whole sitting on a sofa deal. But anyway, um, fast forward, then I started having panic attacks again more frequently and then much more frequently. So I went back to the doctor and he prescribed those Xanax on a regular schedule, um, which was, and I still, still is kind of what they do now, um, which for a while helped. Um, but then it seemed like I, I got worse. I kept having to go up and up and up and up in the medication. Eventually I was hospitalized. Um, I may make a video on that, but you know, that was very unique in and of itself. Um, not many people get to go say they went to the funny farm, you know, or an inpatient experience at least. Um, but actually it's one that I look back on now. I'm glad that it happened. Uh, anyway, moving on. I, um, while I was in the hospital, my mom was looking very hard to try to find a doctor who specialized in anxiety, and she found one, and it was local. I was fortunate um, in that regard. He uh, was from France and was a very, very good doctor. Um, he told me that uh, Xanax has a very short half-life, and that the rebound anxiety from that um, was what was causing me to have extra anxiety on top of it, and usually the rebound anxiety is worse, which is what he described to me. So I switched over to clonopin. Um, I remember it not being a very fun switch over, but I did it. And again, that carried me for a while. But again, as I say this, that doesn't mean it didn't go away. I was still having panic attacks. I was still, you know, agoraphobic. I still had trouble, you know, because now then, you know, as time went on, I went on to college. Um, and I did get married. Um, but even that, you know, it was taking multiple clumps. So it was like one of those things where people said, you know, well, if you're a diabetic, then um, you take insulin. And that was kind of the way I was looking at it. I was like, okay, you know, I'm a diabetic, or I have anxiety, so I'm going to take these medications. So I did. Never abuse them. Never. I don't like taking anything. I think a lot of you out there can resonate with that, that I don't like taking medication at all. Um, but as time went on, I realized if I was going to do what life said, you know, to succeed, I needed to do that. So at least I could be out and about and doing things. Um, anyway, so the doctor who the time went on, got married, had a daughter and then we're getting very close to, but during that time, my daughter was fairly, fairly new to the world that that doctor passed away. He died of cancer. And I started bouncing around from doctor to doctor, um, which there was a other I had this feeling at the time that I needed to start coming off the medications, but I really wasn't listening to that, you know, little voice in my head. Um, yeah, I know voices, right? 
<clears throat> but anyway, um, so found some other doctors. I had also my other doctor had put me on an antidepressant at one point as well. Um, so we had to start playing around with new antidepressants, which so that one was Zoloft. Um, again, not going into all the histories of medications, been on lots of them. Um, but it was then through all the bouncing around that I started to really start to listen and I started reading on the internet and other people that have come off the medications and how the medications can actually be, you know, their side effects are actually exactly what's, you know, you're tr being treated for, you know, anxiety, um, just whatever, you can look that up. But at the same time, I'm not a doctor. So if you're on medication and it's working for you, fantastic. Um, so anything that I say is just my journey again. So again, fast forwarding and skipping a lot of gory details, I started coming off the Zoloft. Um, it took a while, a lot of sweat, blood, sweat and tears. Um, when you're married and have kids and whatever, and I was working and it was tough uh, to say the least, but I got off. And I remember the first couple months was just amazing. Um, and then I'll, for whatever reason, I crashed and I crashed really hard, but I was really doing a lot of research on the internet about it at the time, um, which again, which of coming off of all my medication. And um, so the next thing I knew that I wanted to do was I was no longer, I didn't want to do Western medicine anymore. Again, just my journey. Um, I wanted to go the holistic route. So I found a doctor, went and saw them. They did apply kinesiology, which is muscle testing, which I thought was completely bizarre. I kind of felt like, and even they, you know, it was like voodoo medicine, but I was, I was at point, I was ready to try anything. I got tested, which is the first time I'd ever been tested for my neurotransmitters. The thing that stood out about that particular one, that test was that I basically had no serotonin, um, which may have been from the fact that I had just come off the, the medication and my, finally my body had caught up and it wasn't used to making it because it was used to having the drug, it would be my guess. Um, anyway, he put me on a 5-HTP uh, regimen, which after a year's time, um, we got tested and besides feeling better, all my neuro neurotransmitters, including my serotonin, were back in the normal range, which proved to myself that there was something to the holistic side that the medications weren't helping me um, the way they said they were. And that the holistic doctors and the things that they were saying, there, there was something more there that I could tangibly show somebody on paper um, and just the way I felt. So then at that point, I started to uh, really get serious about, sorry, I'm gonna look over here at my notes a little bit. Um, started getting serious about coming off of the benzodiazepines now, which I actually had gone up on while I was coming off of the antidepressant, which, you know, looking back, which I hadn't, but I did. Um, and I found the Ashton Protocol on a site called benzybuddy.org. They may put that in the description or you can just Google it. Um, and I read a lot. You know, I've been told recently now that, you know, stop reading because those of us that have anxiety or are very sensitive, we do tend to, um, I think we can actually create some of the symptoms, especially if we've read about them that other people have. Them. So I'm not doing that anymore, at least I'm trying not to. Um, anyway, after reading through that and finding the Ashton protocol to come off, which is the only protocol that I'm aware of that anybody that's ever tested how to, to come off of benzodiazepine, I started following that. Now, according to her, it should have taken me about a month took me six months to get switched over from, because I decided at that point, I'm sorry, I'm skipping ahead, that one of the best ways for some people to come off was to switch from Clonopin to Valium. It has a longer half-life. Again, we're getting into the half-life thing. Um, and that's when it kind of triggered my, my memory of going back to the Xanax thing. Um, so to me, it kind of connected some dots. But um, again, it's not for everybody. I'm still a work in progress, so I don't know. I know it was very hard to do the switch. Um, it took me six months. Um, as I'm coming off now, I know now though, 
it seemed like at that point I was either going to have to go to a liquid titration of the clonopin. I needed something much smaller, and that's what one of the things that Valium does for you is allows you to come off more slowly because they make smaller pills, and it's not as strong as clonopin. Um, but to give you an idea, like when I got off, I was on two milligrams of clonopin, um, but I ended up on like I think it was 48 milligrams of of value, which when you tell more people that it's like, you know, you're a junkie and whatever, which I suppose in some ways I am. Um, didn't mean to be, but you know, it is what it is. Um, so, but again, I guess that begs the question, is it hard to come off the benzene? My new belief now is that if you believe something to be true, you're going to make it so. So I'm trying to now take away some of the things that I've read. So if you do go to benzibuddy.org, know that it's, it's a great reference point. But if you read people's stories, you're gonna, some of them are gonna scare the pants off of you. Um, so don't get too caught up into that. Realize that each one of us has our own journey. And that's something that I'm trying to remind myself of, is that I'm on my own journey and I don't have to be like them. Um, it doesn't have to be hard. Now, having said that, yes, I'm back being homebound where I wasn't before on the medication. Some people would argue, well, you were better where you were before. No, um, I have emotions now. I feel things. I feel too much, which is almost 30 years of not feeling and being and numbing yourself out. It's tough to all of a sudden come back to life and start having feelings again. Um, I didn't realize how much it really, what I really was affecting me. Um, but again, that's maybe that's for another video or whatever, but um, so anyway, that's where I'm at right now. I've just recently done some new testing um, because I know through muscle testing that my neurotransmitters are off and taking certain herbs, supplements, whatever, to try to combat that. There was one supplement in particular that I had found off the internet from a doctor who's about an hour and a half from me. So I finally decided since that one seemed to help the most that I was actually going to see him and he is holistic, he's a holistic MD psychiatrist. So I thought, okay. Again, not cheap. Um, yes, I have a dog. Um, not cheap. And like anything with this, it seems like what works isn't covered and what covered doesn't work. So, but what's my life worth? And as some people would say, it's priceless. So it was worth it to me. So tomorrow, actually, I'm going to be getting results from those tests, which I assume they're going to tell me my things are off. But at least I'll have an idea of what they are and he'll be able to help me, I'm hoping, Give me a better idea of what other supplements could help me to get through this. Um, and as we, as I, as I make these videos, I'll share them with you. But again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a holistic doctor. I'm not any of those things. So these are things that you would need to go out and you know study on your own, um, like getting 5-HTP or whatever for and taking it in the evening at bedtime to raise your serotonin level is something that you can do. Um, you can read about it and you can buy the supplements right over the counter. But again, I don't want to be responsible for something. I just, I'm just putting my journey out there to say that when they tell you like in an antidepressant state that it actually adds to the amount of serotonin you have, that's not true. It takes the serotonin that you do have a little bit, you know, that you're making. Oh, and this is really important. During all of this, I changed my diet. Yes, I went gluten-free, that, that terrible thing that everybody's doing. For me, I also muscle tested for those things. Um, but if the belief that at least for mo mo most of what I've read now is that 95% of your neurotransmitters are made in your gut. So you've got to get that healed. Um, and that's something that I did. I can do other videos on that, if, you know, and I probably will. Um, you know, with that, I'm trying to get, I'm kind of getting off topic. I just want people to understand as they're watching this, if anybody watches this, that um, I've been through the ringer and it's been a very long time. So yes, I've been married. Yes, I have a very good support system. Yes, I have money to be able to go out and do some of the things that I need to do. Not rich by any means, but um, I did work for a fairly lengthy period of time. No, it wasn't easy. There were days that, um, I was drugging myself legally again, but I was just to get into work. I was existing. Um, and so even though now I'm trapped behind four walls most of the time, although it's getting better every day as I push myself out, 
um, I can feel, I can, I can see as this progresses, how much better my life is going to be because of the decisions that I'm making now. Um, and if you can relate to that, that's my hope. Um, but with that, I think I'm going to end there. That gives you a pretty good idea that I've been doing this for a while. Um, when I talk about something, I know I'm trying to be as upbeat whenever, like in the last couple of days, I haven't done a video in a couple of days where I was really down, really down. One day I slept half the day. Uh, I was so physically exhausted. Um, a lot of other side effects we can talk about with benzodiazepine withdrawal. But again, I don't want to harp too much on that because again, if you believe that to be true, I think you can create it. So um, I'm going to be careful about that. But I was just say that it's been a rough couple of days. Tomorrow is going to be Halloween. This may be the second year in a row that I don't get to go trick-or-treating with mine. She's 10 years old, which is tough. I probably will make a video about that because if you're out there and you're watching this, then you know that how lonely of a journey this can be and how misunderstood you may be. Um, but there's people like me out there and I know there's millions of people out there and that's why I'm doing this. Um, that's it. That, that's my backstory. Um, that's what's led me to where I'm at at the moment. Again, I am trying to go holistic. I am trying to come off the medications and I'm also trying to push myself every day doing videos going for walks as far as I can go. Today, I went with my wife. I got to the 10th house that I talked about. Um, again, I was with somebody, but I got to that 10th house. I came home. It felt great. Um, will I be able to go trick-or-treating tomorrow? I don't know, but um, that's okay too. I'm doing this for the long term. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. Um, God bless each and, one, each and every one of you. Love and light to all of you, and thank you for watching and taking the time to hear about my journey. Thank you.